You saw a little thing says Chris yes. is recording? All yes. right. All right, YouTube. Well, how you doing? It's Pierce Dad Rich again, and I'm here with my boy J.K. Ken. Uh, he's a human resource professional, Done, been in the game for like five, six years. And so what I want to do is I want to talk about the top 22, uh, why AV5 was, was so important, and basically why we're getting lied to uh, DoorDash drivers. You know, you got people like Vinny Coop and uh, PT Drop, PTD, uh, Pay the Drive. Now, mind you, I do like those channels, but I do feel like they're a little misinformed, um, thinking that they're trying, you know, the lawmakers are trying to come after us, they're trying to get us. And the truth is, uh, California is just trying to be a pioneer, if you will, or a trailblazer trying to, you know, stop this gig economy from doing against federal law. So, so J.K. Ken, how you doing, man? Great. How are you? Marvelous, marvelous. So, uh, let me start about, off with a little background, uh, if you don't mind. Tell me a little bit about your, you know, HR experience uh, or whatnot. So, I have had um, HR experience in numerous, um, nu numerous. Uh, sections of HR, such as um, HRIS, employee relations, um, also a generalist um, in, in various fields, such as durable medical equipment, logistics, um, also advertising. Nice. And they say, uh, a lot of people believe that, you know, you have to be a gig worker to really understand why this is important. Do you agree or disagree with that? Or is that a bad question? <laughs> um, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that, um, I, I think, I believe it's important to also understand what the labor laws actually are. Um, if I can expound on that just for a second. Please. Um, I, I have to say, I listened to this Bailey Cook guy. Is that his name? Uh, Bailey Coop. Bailey Coop. Bailey Coop. Bentley Coop. Okay. Um, well, I apologize for um, getting his name incorrect. Um, mm -hmm. My issue with him is let's let's take the issue out of it. From, from the start. Let's, let's take that out of it. The okay. fact that he's not even in California and he doesn't even have a vote, in my opinion, he doesn't have the right to an opinion in this case because it doesn't yeah. affect him at all. So, and if you're going to spread propaganda, because let's be honest, that's what it is. When I watched this channel, I felt like from the start, that he was either paid directly or by proxy by one or more of these companies. Interesting. Um, it, it just became apparent to me that there was an agenda in that video. And that agenda was to, was to misinform, because let's be honest, we are in an era of misinformation. And I felt like this particular episode of his channel just added to that. So um, let's let's expand upon that. You know, let's break down some um, specifics. Mm -hmm. um, one of which uh, is Billy Coop, uh, along with a lot of gig workers, believe that this is some attack on the gig economy. And first of all, let's just start with this. Do you believe that California is charging, making us pay taxes and making Uber and the gig economy to pay in Social Security and those type of programs? Do you think that is an attack uh, on the gig economy? Or is this California basically doing due diligence on, on employees' behalf? It's supposed to be a help, not a hindrance. And if you view it as a hindrance, then that means that you have no idea what companies are saving by not having to do it. First of all, first of all, 
if you are classified as an employee, right, one of the mm -hmm. first and foremost things that you have to do is you have to go through a background check. From what I understand, gig economy workers have to go through a background check, right? Correct. Uh, matter okay. of fact, uh, I said I could get exact on check for Grubhub, and that was because mm -hmm. I was there for a year. And mind you, I, I don't think I do Grubhub very often. I'm, I might have done 15 deliveries for Grubhub total. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, right now, I was waiting for Uber to come back from my um, uh, background check, and because of COVID, that took some time. But yes, I did a background check for uh, Uber as well, and I was already with them for a year. So I did basically yearly background check for these companies. Okay, first of all, you do a background check, that isn't a requirement of an employee. That's first off. So let, 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 let's make sure that we categorize this properly, right? The money that these companies are saving by not being employees, guess what? If you're an employee, they have to pay for your business expenses. You don't step into an office and have to pay for your own computer, do you? No. Your way of making money is with your car. They are supposed to be paying for your insurance. They are supposed to be paying for your car. They are supposed to be paying for the tools that are required for the job, and they are not doing that. And that is what they are trying to do with this Prop 22, avoid paying for those things. Let me ask a question, and it might yeah. be a rhetorical one, in fact. Do you think that maybe, just maybe, having to pay all of these trumped up insurance charges for, I don't know, say good, I'm just throwing out a ballpark figure, one million drivers in California? Uh, I'm just saying, sounds like a lot of money, right? Right. Um, from what I understand, the gig economy worker has what has to pay sometimes double or triple what the average person pays in insurance costs for their automobile. That's to cut you off, but my insurance is roughly three hundred. Insurance on top of that, and I did try to boost up my insurance um, to like. 200, uh, 2,500, uh, 250 um, in collision and body because I want to be safe, you know? Okay. See, and, th and that's what I mean. These are the charges that these companies should be paying on your behalf. If you drive a truck, right, you have commercial insurance. If you drive a truck for, say, a grocery store, right? Right they are responsible for paying the industrial and commercial insurance on said truck. It is not the individual driver. So how is it that th these companies get to basically cry foul because a judge correctly categorized the gig worker as an employee, but they get to go kicking and screaming and they get to write a proposition and ask for the voters to bail them out. If you or I were in a civil suit, right, and we lost that civil suit, we don't get to go to <laughs> Sacramento and write a proposition and say, you know what, I don't like the way that ruling went. So why don't I ask the voters to help me? We don't, <laughs> once, once a superior, Supreme Court judge handles hands down his or her ruling, that's it. So how is it that these companies get to circumvent the law in a ruling from a Supreme Court judge with a proposition? Don't you think that's a tad bit funny? It's the weirdest thing in the world. And, and I got to be honest, I'm trying to remember the last time I ever seen a ruling uh, that was later challenged by a vote. I don't think I've ever seen it. Um, and to me, it kind of feels like, okay, if you got a hundred million dollars, couldn't you work a deal out with an insurance company and maybe get like a deal on insurance? Mm-hmm. 
you know. But let me back up a little bit because I want to ask you what should be a very obvious, a very mm -hmm. dumb question. Mm -hmm. What is an employee and what is an independent contractor according to human resources? And I got to ask this question because it's funny. I think everybody over the age of 16 has been an employee before. But this makes me, this, this top 22 makes me feel like we don't know what an actual employee is. So let's, let's give, me the, give me the for dummies version of what is an employee. Well, that can be summed up with one simple statement. Whenever you have to follow rules, you are an employee. <laughs> it's really just that simple. If you have to follow rules, you are an employee. An independent contractor gets to freelance and do whatever the heck they want, whatever way that they want. If you have a certain set of rules and guidelines that you have to follow, that in itself makes you an employee. Okay, so if I'm a DoorDash driver, as it stands right now, and I could choose my schedule, you know, coming in and go when I want to, that doesn't make me an employee. That's kind of a, that kind of makes me self-employed. I mean, at least that's the common argument. We have a lot of gig economy workers. Uh, right. Do you agree that I'm actually my own boss when I do that? No. The reason why, the reason why is because, again, it goes back to my previous statement. Do you have to follow rules and guidelines? Yeah, I mean, I got to make sure the package is there correctly. I got to make sure the food's in there correctly. Um, I got to drive to a certain destination. Um, yeah. If and I got to do follow, this via app. If you have to follow rules and guidelines, you are an employee, point blank, period. That is basically what this Supreme Court said. If you have to follow rules and guidelines, and if you have to, Actually, go through a background check. That makes you an employee. There is no argument here. But because these companies make billions of dollars, they are shorting these gig workers the money. That because I mean, obviously, we've all heard the term "spend money to make money," right? Right. They're not spending money. <laughs> the, the 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 money. The money is being spent by the individual. How is that right? Well, if, somebody, if someone can answer that question for me, that would be awesome. That actually leads into a very nice segue because uh, one thing that Billy Coop brings up, um, and a lot of gig economy workers agree with it, uh, when I work for a Walmart or a Target or a Applebee's or even a taxi driver, if I drive my car to and from work, I don't expect Applebee's to pay for that car. Um, my rebuttal to that is my car is not needed for Applebee's to do their job. And the time that I work for Applebee's and they need me to do the job, they either paid me under the table or I got something on my paycheck. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel about what I just, how, how do you feel about, about what I just said? It is a company's requirement to pay for the tools to do said work. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. If you're a construction worker, you don't have to pay for the steel to build, make the building, right? No, no. Okay. Well, but Go here's ahead. one rebuttal people here's a, here's a rebuttal people will have is say, okay, as a cook, uh, the tip agencies do not pay for uh, the knives, the uh, shoe jacket, or anything like that. You have to get that uh, reimbursed in a uh, tax return later. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah, when I was uh, working for the tip agencies, uh, Acrobat, um, culinary staffing, specialty advanced staffing, they did not pay for the uh, knives or the. So, uh, let me ask stuff. you were the yeah. knives supplied by the restaurant then? No. So you had to pay for your own knives? 
Correct. Interesting. So that's also illegal is what you're saying. I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm just saying that it sounds funny. Okay. 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 But going back to your point, if I need something for this job, the, the employer or the business should pay for that. Correct. Okay. Correct. Absolutely. I, now, I would like to point out, if it's okay, one specific point that this gentleman made in this video about the insurance. Yeah. Now, I read the entire Prop 22 document where he only gave excerpts of said document. First of all, it's nothing but a whole bunch of legal rigmarole to basically say, hey, everything stays the same. That, mm -hmm. And it's really nothing more than a pat on the back and a wink, right? He made the specific point about how insurance will be paid up to $1 million per incident if you have an accident. First of all, that tells me that you never dealt with insurance because they will try to do anything and everything that they can to circumvent paying you. <laughs> That's your job, actually. So that whole little, oh, look, it says that they will pay you up to $1 million. No, no. Because if you, if you have ever dealt with an insurance company on, in any way, shape, fashion, or form, they do everything in their power to make sure that they pay less than said, in this case, $1 million. And let's be honest, how many car insurance accidents, how many insur you know, car accidents are really worth $1 million? Very few. I mean, nobody nobody drives around in Rolls Royce, and if you do, you're not driving the car. <laughs> and you're definitely, and you're definitely not doing DoorDash. You, you're definitely doing DoorDash. <laughs> not if you have a car that's worth that much. Let's be right. honest here. This this whole thing with this guy actually agitates me to no end. Because we shouldn't be here talking about some guy in what? What is he? In North Carolina, South Carolina? If I remember correctly, yes. What are we doing? Why are we even talking about this when this guy doesn't even have a vote? Well, what I think the concern is that, because you know, California, New York, and, you know, these are two states that if something passes here, someone else is going to think, think about doing it too. So I think what the concern is, if California passes this law, it's going to cause a triple, or a triple effect, a ripple effect throughout the whole nation. So we can do it fine. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the, I think that's a concern. Fine. Yeah, and I get that. But guess what? There's, a, there's an old cliche that says, let's crawl before we walk. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a vote. So guess what, sir? You don't get a say-so. Shut your mouth and sit down in a corner. Really? <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, now I know New York is considering this law here um, as well. And, and, you know, to me, it just, the reason why I'm voting uh, for Prop 22 or against it, I, I believe it's vote no. Uh, I'm voting no on it simply because I've never seen a business with this many class action suits regarding federal labor law. You know, I've been a part of three class action suits. <laughs> and, 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 it, and it just leads to yet another cliche. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, how, how, many, how many times have we seen smoke with these gig companies? Something has to change, period. And, if, and if, if this money, if this money that they're saving continues to be on the gig worker, how are you actually making any, any more money? Because that, that the, the insurance that you have to pay for, right, mm -hmm. gives you 24-7 coverage. So that means you're paying for insurance even when you're not on the clock. That is correct. And so what you're saying is, if DoorDash had paid for the insurance, 
I could effectively get liability, you know, because I don't need to have commercial insurance. So, so I'm effectively getting commercial insurance 24 seven. Gotcha. Exactly. Gotcha. Which is unnecessary money for the gig worker to spend. It is, I mean, for what? Commercial insurance for what? You're going to the grocery store. You're going to get some milk from the store. What do you need commercial insurance for? And you're talking about all my time off and stuff like that. I got you. I got you. Um, <clears throat> there's a question I want to bring up. Um, I'm trying to see if I remember it. Um, yeah, lost my train of thought. How you like that? <laughs> well, that's generally how this goes. When sure. you're when you're in a conversation that's this heavy, I just want to say, um, I I have to reiterate that I feel like this gentleman. And keep in mind that particular episode that is in question, where he is talking about. California Prop 22, sponsored by a health insurance company. And by the way, guys, I will leave you link to the video that we're talking about from Ben Coop down below. Um, but the question I want to ask you is, when it comes to insurance, uh, I'm going to try that again. <laughs> 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 oh my god and the thing is i'm not editing this out um well we all get to laugh yeah 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 well it's fine i had an actual like raw video so it's, it's, it's fine um but uh, yeah oh minimum wage that's what we want to talk about minimum wage okay let's um so uh when California guarantees you a minimum wage, and this is a ge very general question. Mm -hmm. Does that mean the least I can make is fifteen dollars an hour, um, or does it mean the maximum I can make is fifteen dollars an hour? And that is the to... absolute minimum. That is the floor. Got it. So when I lost whatever, the whatever the members, whatever the minimum, uh, the minimum wage. Uh, point is in your particular county that is the absolute floor so when the judge says you have the, the gig economy has to guarantee us a minimum wage mm -hmm. a lot of gig economy workers took that to mean that we'll be making 15 dollars an hour all of a sudden my argument would be no during the time that we make less than fifteen dollars an hour i mean i've told you times where i made ten dollars an hour at any given time right that means they have to somehow you know either guarantee me a, a minimum wage or give me enough compensation to give me the, the minimum wage is that right, true? right. so let, let's let's put it this way let's say for instance you make a certain amount of deliveries that get you a hundred dollars right Right. And through those deliveries, you worked 10 hours to get them. Right? right. That puts you at $10 an hour. What that simply means is that that payment has to go up $5 for every hour that you worked. And it also guarantees any sort of overtime over the eight hours. Correct. Okay. So it will be time and a half on top of that. Correct. Additional thing. Correct. Okay. Which doesn't sound like a bad thing because honestly, it's adapt because any given gig worker works 10 hours a day. I mean, that's how they're clearing up. Looks like I got about 10 minutes left. Um, that's how they're getting, you know, $200 a day mm -hmm. at any given time. So, what you're saying is if they work more hours. I mean, if they are getting to the minimum wage and the overtime, they'll actually make more money in less time. Simple math. Two plus two okay. equals four. <laughs> um, let's do one last thing because um, I am like I'm running out of time. I want to talk about the sick leave. Uh, now, the one thing about the uh, Cobra, I believe it's, I signed up for it too. 
I had to pay into that twenty dollars a month, and that helped me get my quote sick time. Uh, and I forgot the number that I get for that, but it's one of the things you find on, on Billy Coop, and I'll read the link down in below the description. But with paid sick leave, I get that without having to pay for it automatically. Correct. And I'll get the at minimum three days a year. Seventy two hours. Notice. 72 hours. Yeah. Okay. And I will get paid for that. Mm hmm Yeah. So is there anything else you need to uh, – can, can you spend more about that? Well, I mean, I mean, is it really not necessary? I mean, it is. I, I get it. It's pretty simple. You out three yeah. days, you get three days. Now, however, however, I want to I wanna make sure that I am clear. Um. I think every county is different. Like, say, for instance, in my particular county of Alameda, um, or every city even is different. Um, in the city of Oakland, you get the three days automatically, but I believe you have to work at least um, 60 days, 60 to 90 days before it actually takes effect. So I want to make sure that I'm clear. Every city and every county is different. The only thing that is not up for debate is the fact that you get those three days of sick leave. Okay. Okay. So you get that paid. So see, at the end of the day, all, all the judge did in California was basically guarantee our state and federal rights as working individuals. It was exactly. never an attack on gig economy workers. It was never, never meant to be. And let's be honest. Let's be honest. I want to make sure that I am abundantly clear for those who are watching this video to really understand. Since when? Since when is having your rights reinforced a bad thing? If if you have a problem with actually having rights, you should probably ask yourself why. This is this this is not this is not about an attack on how you make money for your family. It's just fortifying your rights. That's all. That's it. I, I think that you should have the same rights that I have as a as a worker here in the United States, and especially in the state of California. Don't you? It's a rhetorical yeah. question, but obviously we're here. So it's a question that needs to be asked. Do you believe that you have the same rights as me as a working individual in the state of California? And then here's another question, albeit rhetorical, but one that has to be asked yet again. If you are for Prop 22, what makes you think that these companies care about you on that level? Just asking. Let me ask you this question, since you said that. I mean, because you know a few gig economy workers, whether Uber drivers or DoorDash drivers, how many of them gave you the impression that they love, I mean, that DoorDash loved them? Um, that they care about them. That would be uh, zero. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing I bring that up because every gig economy worker has a horror story about their company. So, you know, we can't really let them, you know, take our rights away from us because we think we're going to get some extra freedom or some extra whatever. But you know. that's how they sold this whole thing. They sold this whole thing on freedom without everyone reading, yet again, the fine print. You need to read the fine print in everything that you sign up for because you never know what ugly monster is behind the curtain. Yes. Um, let me ask you one thing because this is actually, I think, honestly, I think at the end of the day, and I got like, you know, four minutes left. Um, the biggest concern people have is that this is going to be the end of the gig economy and certain individuals will now not be able 
to have the freedoms that they have, whether it's just the, you know, the freedom uh, to work as a disabled person or whatever. Um, do you think that this will end the gig economy as you know it? They make too much money. No way. Mm -hmm. No way, no how, not now, not ever. It's here to stay. The, see, the difference is, the difference is, is that people actually believe the lip service when these gig companies said, oh, well, we're going to shut down operations in California. Yeah, right. And you lose a third of your revenue. Come on, man. Who you fool? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I, I believe uh, DoorDash is 22% of the income comes from California. Oh, it's only, is, oh, it's only 22%. Oh, my for what, God. For what I understood, what I understood. Yeah. But, you know, 22, one third, it's a big chunk. The big chunks. You know, you're not I mean, gonna let that go. 20, uh, let, let's go ahead and give it that 22%, right? 22% from one state? You're not giving up that money, man. No, nobody, nobody's giving up that money. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what kind of business you are. You're not gonna sit up here and say, oh, because the rules are unfair, I'm going <laughs> to sit here and I'm gonna stop operations in California because it's not fair. No, nobody's doing that. Come on, man. Who are you fooling? You're not fooling me or anybody else, I hope. <laughs> well, talk, brother. Okay, well, let me go and end this right now. Um, but uh, guys, if you want me to do more of these videos, let me know down in the comments below. JK, I can't, I can't thank you enough, brother. It is so great to have you on here. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being patient with all the technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, man. Thank you for having me. I certainly appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, guys, if you like the shirt that he's wearing, uh, leave the link down below to where you can purchase your own. So, all right, guys. Thank you so much, and uh, have a good one. All right.